dress rehearsal per se or a competitive scrimmage to follow yeah. up? It'll be uh, – tomorrow's scrimmage will be more of a competitive scrimmage. There's been years where it was more of a practice game. There's been years where we've had our um, – It, it, we'd have uh, George's offense and defense and the majority of our special teams on one sideline and the, basically the rest of the guys would be the opponent and we would actually um, uh, scout team it up, card it up, try to try to run uh, try to run their um, defense, try to run their offense, try to run their kicking game. But this time we decided to uh, have it, to, like you said, be more of a competitive scrimmage. We're still more guys we're trying to evaluate. There's a lot of, a lot of competition going on, uh, even in the kicking teams. Um, there's just a lot of guys that are right on the bubble if we were to have a 70-man travel squad. We, we know we only have one away game in the first five games, but we always prepare for if we had to travel, which we do game two, who'd, who'd be on the travel team? And we always do that because we want to um, make sure we're, we're preparing the right guys for special teams. So it's kind of like a last cut. Really. Yeah, and it, it's, it's like it, but the reality is game one, we'll, there'll be 80 players that'll be eligible um, to p <coughs> compete. And like I said, four out of the first five, they'll be 80 guys that will be able to compete. Um, and actually, this game, everybody can compete because it's a non-conference game. But it is similar to that. You know, you're, you we're trying to always make decisions based on a 70 number. So let's ask Coach, uh, our Coach Pruitt on Monday about the synchronizer from the press box to the sidelines. And uh, he told me, of course, that uh, Coach Sher is, Sher is going to be in the press box with a couple of draft assistants. Now, how does that offensive make up? I think Coach Shotty's on the field. Uh, it's Coach Lily, who's going to be in the press Lily box. will be on the ground. Lily will be on the ground? He'll be on the ground. Uh, my guess is that uh, Brian will be up. McClendon. But I'll be honest with you, I, I don't – with this new offensive configuration, I'm not, I forgot. Uh, I'm not sure right this second. But I know John's going to be down. The two special teams coordinators will be on the ground. I know that. Thomas Brown. Be I, I know Rob will be down. I know Shoddy will be down. And, uh, you know, exactly where um, Thomas and BMAC are, I'm not sure. But I think BMAC's up, and I think Thomas will be down. But I'm not 100%. When the booth uh, upstairs send you all down, Coach Schottenheimer will be on the sideline with his headset. You'll hear the plays coming to him. Oh, yeah. I've got a three-way mic. Uh, I've got the ability to flip. Um, well, we, really, I use two. I use the offense and defense. I try not to get on the special teams one because there's usually some conversation going on. Um, uh, and it, w what happened last year was Coach Ball was upstairs, and he was still doing kickoff returns. So Coach Lilly was on the ground talking with Coach Ball a lot, making sure everything was covered uh, downstairs on the kickoff return team. But this year, you know, because John handles, you know, the two biggies, uh, the kickoff return and the and the punt, and he's on the ground, there's not going to be as much communication going on on special teams. We always have somebody up there, uh, believe it or not, just counting, hat, counting hats. Every time we transition some type of substitution, we're always trying to make sure we know whether there's 11 in the game or not. Because, you, you know, you can get your special teams going and, you got 10 on the field or 12 on the field or whatever, we got to know that immediately and get that squared away. So the guys upstairs will be doing things like that. And there'll be some assignments that the special teams coordinators will want them to be looking for upstairs. But uh, it'll be less communication because those guys will be on the ground. Shotty can call the plays as he gets input from the press box, but you'll have input if you want to see something or something. Or oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I've got – there's a lot of things that um, – um, you know, I'll have my input on just as far as whether we're going to go for it on fourth down, whether or not we're going to um, fake a punt, whether or not we're going to go after a punt, whether we're going to um, uh, set up a return. I mean, 
mean, there's all kind of things I'll be making decisions on. But, um, you know, I, I, I've got a good uh, rapport with Coach Schottenheimer. You know, we it's been it's been it's been interesting because there's a lot of good. You know, when you run a system like he's been running for a while, there's a lot of good things. There's a lot of things he's liked, and and it, but some and some of those things that he's liked is new to us. And we're like, hey, I like that too, a lot. You know, and then there's a lot of things we've been doing that's been pretty good around here, and we've been kind of feeding that to him. And he's like, hey, I like I like that. You know. Uh, you know, so there's certain plays that are creeping in that maybe weren't being practiced quite as much on the front end for certain situations and things of that nature that we had done in the past. And, um, you know, even the tempo that we're practicing at and with, it's a little bit different for him, but he's he's really seen the value of going with the tempo that we've been going with. Um, but he's, he's got a lot of good red zone ideas. We had we had some good red zone ideas too. So we're we're doing a good job of communicating and he's, He's he's got the right kind of ego uh, to be open to new ideas, you know, and, and vice versa. You know, we want to learn too. Mark, have you narrowed the starting quarterback competition too? Uh no, not really. Um, uh, we changed the rotation a little bit, but we're still evaluating all three of those guys on a daily basis. Uh, I didn't. I didn't get with Shotty on that yet. We're gonna. We're watching the film today, and then that, that's what we do when the film's done. We'll, we'll get the rotation down. Mark, is it general rules football coaches don't like to give out a lot of information publicly? Yeah. Fans, media, hmm. Yeah. For good reason. Yeah. Um, have you found in in recent years that you you sort of disseminate even less information than that you might have? Yeah, don't you ago? feel that? Don't you guys feel I, that too? I do, but I would much rather quote you in addition yeah. to me. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like telling anybody anything. I just anything, any information usually is useful to the other team. I don't want to help the other team. I don't want to be rude to y'all, but I don't want to help the other team. It's our goal to win. It's our goal to, you know, have the least amount of information out that would help another team prepare and may and be ready for something or someone or whatever it may be. So. I mean, I hate to be evasive to everybody and be a pain in the rear, but the bottom line is uh, the less people know about what we're doing, the better off we'll be, especially on personnel and, and even on scheme, considering you know we've got a new offensive coordinator now. So there's some uncertainty, I would think, uh, for whoever's defending us. They're looking at George's film from last year. They're looking at you know, all the NFL stuff that he's been doing. They're like, well, what, what are they going to do? Um, they don't know. Was there a point when that really changed? Did something happen? Or was there, was there a point when you started to think about it more? Um, it's just there's such a fine line between winning and losing. And um, if one little thing, uh, if somebody has a clue, I mean, it's just like, we don't have anybody out. We try not to have anybody out there during kicking time. You know, if, if you got a fake any given, it's it's kind of easy to see a fake punt. I mean, I think I did, I really believe my mom could watch practice and say, hey, they got a fake punt. <laughs> She'll tell her friend because they they like football too, and, <laughs> and their friend has a nephew, and the nephew, you know, hey, they got a fake punt this week. And then you get stoned, and you look like an idiot, and you get it's a bad day. I mean, one play can cost one game. One game can cost the Eastern Division race. I mean, just so I just – even uh, we don't like it to – I mean, I, I, I love our, our parents, you know, and I, I want them to be at practice when they want to be there. But, you know, we'd prefer people not to be at scrimmages and things of that nature. And we're more uh, closed – in the fall than we are in the spring and I don't know it's so hard though you got scouts in there you got parents in there sometimes you got recruits and their coach that might bring them or whoever and um, it's just it's hard to and then uh, quite frankly you've got you might have uh, any kid on our team and you got 125 guys you got managers trainers They're like hey dad you know we got this cool fake whatever you know <laughs> 
and then he tells his buddy, and it's just you can't stop it. But I at least try not to just throw it out there, and give it to everybody. Social media kind of made it a lot worse. Everything, man. The cam, every every phone's a camera. Good cameras too. And look how little your cameras are now. You're using one right now. It works good. So have you, have you told your mom she's banned from practice? That she's banned. My mom is really funny. If you all would just spend some time with her, you ought to interview her sometime. She's a she's a trip. But she loves football. And uh, she literally, we got our new TV for like Mother's Day, birthday, Christmas, all wrapped up into one. I don't know what it was. But, um, but she figured out how to, you know, the TV, some TVs you can just get the internet right on your TV with the remote. Of course, you can go YouTube and you can get just about any football game from the last 20 years. And so now she's figured out how to get on YouTube and just plug in Georgia versus Ten Tennessee 2001 and she'll just sit there and watch all those games, you know. And she'll watch all last year's games and then she'll watch a TV copy of the teams we're going to play coming up and she'll have her opinions of what she thinks we need to do. And, but she's funny. She loves it though. She does love it. She your harshest critic? Uh, no, she she's learned not to be critical. Um, but uh, she gets fired up. She loves it. Does all this mean you don't think you're gonna name a starter before the opener? I may not tell anybody. <laughs> well, I I don't know. We may not announce anything. We may just say come to the game and we might get a hundred more people come to the game or something. Or get a higher TV rating. Rotation, but if I call out the names, could you give me just a couple attributes about each one? Okay, I'll do that. A, a Lambert. Lambert's tall. <laughs> <laughs> um, Good arm strength, I'll just stuff like that. You know what? I'll say this. The first, a lot of y'all might have been out there when he first started throwing it day one. And I got a little nervous for a minute there because, I mean, he struggled. But I think he's a little nervous, you know, a little nervous energy and all. But he's settled in and he's thrown the ball well uh, as far as just, you know, fundamentally. Um, I, I'd say for the amount of time that he's been here and been in the system, he's really done a good job of learning what to do and, and gotten himself into competition. Because if he if he was a slow processing guy and a high rep guy to figure things out, it had been, it'd been hard for him to even be in the race, you know. So I think he's done a good job of that. And, you know, Bryce has uh, got a live arm, got uh, good athleticism. Bryce uh, has really improved his uh, preparation skills. Uh, he, you know, just starting in the spring, I saw a difference in him. And I think it had a lot to do with him thinking, hey, I'm in this thing where I don't know if he was mature enough before to really be preparing for the moment because He's like, well, it's Hudson's job, or you know, what I mean, I, I think, I don't, at least I saw that. I saw a big difference in the spring, in how he's prepared. Um, uh, Fatone is is a he's a preparation machine. I mean, the guy works. He may be the hardest working guy I've ever seen. Um, and uh, he's uh, he really cares about his team and teammates and, and he cares about making other people better around him. And uh, he's, he's, he's made, uh, he's probably made the least amount of uh, mistakes than anybody out there. You know, he's been very good uh, with having a good purpose every time he throws the ball, which I appreciate about him. Um, but those are some of the things about those guys. You have time for one more? Hey, Jack, you should mention the other day you had some concerns about the second team and the offensive line. I think she kind of said that. You started They've gotten a lot better. They've gotten a lot better. I don't know if across the board we would just say, hey, the backup left tackle would move to left tackle and all that kind of thing. I'm not saying that yet, but they have, they have really come on, uh, improved quite a bit. Of course, we had a little bit here and there where Sims was out for a minute, and I think Lamont was out for a minute. Might have been a family thing that he had to go to. But um, 
they're playing much better in sync. We're getting better pockets uh, to throw from. Um, I see a lot of improvement. Do I feel like, hey, we got heir parents waiting in line for next year even? I mean, I think if they keep coming along, we got a chance. But I think we're also – I think it's going to be very important to recruit some guys that might have to come in and play right away. I mean, I, I would – you know, I, I used to say to the DBs a couple of years ago, I'd, I'd say, you know, like if a guy was second team, I'm like, you're, you're not only – just because these guys ahead of you are leaving doesn't mean you're going to walk in to be the next corner. I mean, you're competing with guys that aren't even here yet. I'll say that. You're competing with guys that aren't here yet because we're going to recruit. And, um, you know, so you need to be preparing because uh, there's no guarantee you're going to be the guy just because you, you have some seniority over someone else. And I think the same thing's true of this. This, this this line, you know, especially the tackle positions, we know two tackles are leaving. Well, just because those guys are sitting at number two doesn't mean they're just going to slot up there and take the job. I mean, we, we're going to recruit some guys that will hopefully compete for that. Hopefully I didn't say anything wrong.